This is Suspenders Unbuttoned Podcast. I'm Sarah. And I'm Julie. Join us for unbuttoned and unedited conversations. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Suspenders Unbuttoned Podcast. My name is Sarah. And I'm Julie. And we're excited to have Matt Damon, also known as Robert Buckley. <laughs> nice switch there. <laughs> Thank you. You nailed the pronunciation. I got it. <laughs> Get those consonants at the end. Uh, got it. Got it. <laughs> um, this, is, this is perfect. <laughs> Perfect. Well, welcome. Thanks for joining us today. We're excited to uh, talk about Blind Date Book Club and whatever else, fantasy football, whatever else comes up. Let's get weird. Let's see where it takes us. Yeah, let's go. <laughs> Perfect. So what can you tell us about Blind Date Book Club? Well, what can I tell? There's just, there's so many plot twists I can't tell you about. But the general gist of it is um, it is about a, a bookstore that has started this little tradition of having uh, people read, sort of pick a book based on a vague description, right? Mm -hmm. And then um, so people, there'll be, there'll be two options and whatever one people are gravitated towards, they'll buy it and they have a discussion about it. But what sort of starts happening is it ends up kind of becoming a bit of a matchmaking thing where people are meeting and finding romance, which kind of makes sense. If you like the same book, maybe you have similar interests or sensibilities. And um, the bookstore owner, played by uh, Aaron Krako, uh, is sort of a little hesitant about it becoming just a dating thing. But NPR decided this is a story we need to run and we want to make it all about the romance. And so she's very hesitant about that. Uh, and I play a writer who hears about this, who has, he's a successful writer, but he's trying to branch into a new area and it's not going so well. So he gets the idea of what if I go and I sort of submit my self-published book under a pseudonym and maybe that's how it gets read and gets attention. So that's kind of where it all starts is, uh, is us converging in, in her bookstore and me trying to get my book uh, in her book club. That, that wow. Sounds like a that's <laughs> That sounds like By the a way, that serious... wasn't a euphemism at all. That just sounded <laughs> so weird. It came out of my mouth. It hit my ear. My brain went, really? <laughs> That's the phrasing? Way to go, Rob. It, it, gonna sounds, be our clip now. <laughs> it sounds like, um, uh, now said my lighting got really weird, but it sounds like a series of miscommunications. Right. Yes. Uh, to be fair, though, it's more of a series of white lies on my character. I see a series of white lies. Everyone should mm -hmm. have those. Um, that always goes over really well with the leading lady. Right. <laughs> always. People love to be deceived. It's adorable <laughs> and fun. That, that won't make them cautious or questionable at all. No, listen, white lies are green flag city. Am I right, ladies? Right, especially in the Hallmark movie world. <laughs> right. Completely, completely. Let's, let's, let's go. Yeah, no, we love that. Um, so there's a little comedy in this uh, too? Yeah, there is some comedy to it. And, and Aaron, I'm sure, I don't know if you, have you ever interviewed Aaron? We have no. not. We would love to, but. Okay. She is very, uh, very funny and very silly and uh, as am I. In, in real life. And uh, so we, we were trying our best as much as we could to add extra beats of it as well. There was some in the script and then we were also working any chance we could get to add, uh, add a little irreverence and, and silliness to it. Um, we're, we're here for all the irreverence yeah. and silliness. Let's be honest, right? Yeah. I'm hoping that yeah, Erin didn't like a pun or two too, because she's kind of like the queen of puns on social media. She's very, very good at puns. Yeah. You know what else she's good at uh, is I have never met someone who is so adept at finding perfect gifts. Oh, yeah. Okay, well, there you go. She, a, she also uses emojis in ways that not many <laughs> other people. She can tell an entire story that way. So, uh, Yes, yeah. It's a skill. It's a true it, skill. It's yeah. a skill set. <laughs> So you have entire conversations with gifts to. It, it can happen. She's much. So there was a thread with uh, the director, Peter Benson. And yeah. Who we love. That started when we started filming. Uh, you know, Peter. Oh yeah. Yeah. We, yeah. We've had him on and we were at Madden person. Yeah. 
and at a oh, fan yeah. event. He's yeah, wonderful, we, right? We love Peter. He's so the great. best. Yeah. Yes. Uh, this was my first time with him. I had heard wonderful things from Brendan Penny about Peter, mm -hmm. and uh, he did not disappoint. We had the best time. But there's a thread with the three of us going, and yeah, she's just an assassin. Like, we'll just be like just riffing, and then she will send a gift of me that yeah. perfectly either burns me or mm -hmm. is just funny. Mm -hmm. And both Peter and I are like, How, what did you go to school for this? What is this? Yeah. <laughs> uh, pretty, pretty, probably pretty much so. Yeah, no, um, it's 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 a fun thing. I mean, I have yeah. entire conversations at work about medical things with gifts, so I know oh, I would yeah. love to see one of those things. <laughs> It's, uh, uh, it is very entertaining. Super fun. So, okay, so you play uh, your character is Graham. Uh, uh, tell us a little bit about Graham. Uh, other than he's a writer and he wants his book, like what drives him? Uh, well, I think when when we meet Graham, what's driving him is the the drive to what's driving him is the drive. What's driving him is the desire to branch into something new and to sort of get out of his comfort zone and to challenge himself and to grow, mm -hmm. which is something I really liked about him. Uh, Cause I think that's fun and that's relatable. And I can, uh, I can, I can run with that cause I had that in my own life. So he's sort of looking to expand and become a beginner in this, which is very funny, right? To, to have someone who is very successful in a field, stay in the field, pretend to be someone else and to be met with rejection. So it's, right. it's, it's sort of like a, a fish out of water scenario where he's like, but wait, I'm good at this. Right. Wait, what? <laughs> you know? So it's fun to watch him get humbled and be caught off guard. Uh, I, I always enjoy that. It's fun. It's fun seeing someone being taken down a peg. That sounds a lot of fun. So we heard, we talked with Faith yesterday who plays Alice and she said oh, that yeah. her character is connected to both your character and um, Meg, Aaron's character, Meg. So can you tease a little bit about how she's connected to both of you? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. She works at the the bookstore that Meg owns. So okay. she is Meg's friend uh, as well as employee. And um, it also turns out that she is a fan of uh, the book okay. series that my character has written. So when I, um, when I show up purporting to be someone else, she doesn't really catch on. But then once I actually dramatically reveal who I really am, she is kind of starstruck and, and geeks out over me. Uh, fun. Everyone likes a good geek out, right? Come on. Yeah, we've all been there. It's relatable. We've all, we've all been there. It's super fun um, to, to be able to do those moments. Yeah. Plus, I think, you know, fans, when they're watching these things, will, will love that because... Uh, we've talked about, we've done some fan experiences and we've seen the people watching these movies get to geek out over the people that yes. they love to watch on their right. screens. And that's just really a relatable moment, probably. I, I, I'm i looking forward to that now. It's always fun to have a geek out. I, I've had them myself. Um, even even trying to be cool, uh, I've, I've had geek out moments. I saw Henry Winkler at a convention oh. and I had zero cool about it. Yeah. Uh, Don't think, even try I to hide I it. Hug, I think I hugged him. I mean, I, 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 like I guess I had zero fun? chill. And he's just, he's just, he's America's dad practically, right? right? Like he, he's just become so infinitely lovable. Uh, but I've also had the other experience where people know me from a show and yeah. they don't agree with the behavior my character is oh. participating in. And they feel the need to shout that out at me on the street. No. So I remember when I was, I was doing a show called Lipstick Jungle yes. and my character was having an affair with a married woman. Mm -hmm. And uh, so this is like my first like proper big show and yeah. I'm in New York. This is, it's all, there's all sorts of newness happening. And one day I'm walking out of a building and I hear a woman say, uh, what you're doing is not right. Uh, I kind of, I'm confused. Like, am I walking through a construction zone? So I look and sure enough, there is a woman stopped looking at me like, I, pardon? And she says, you know, what, what you're doing isn't right. And I was like, I'm, do we know each other? And she was like, she's a married woman and Nico has a husband. And I suddenly realized, oh my gosh, she is taking her beef to the streets with me, not 
she thinks I'm the character still. Mm -hmm. So I was, that was the first time I was like, okay, this is uh, a weirder version of that interaction. <laughs> and uh, I was like, okay, don't worry. Next episode, I'll end it all. I promise. <laughs> I, get out of this. I didn't, my character didn't, but so yeah, it can go uh, either way. It can be pleasant geek outs or weird. I yeah. need to blast some resentments at you geek out. Oh, it's I always mean, I'm laughing, but that's, it's really not funny. <laughs> no, it's a little scary. It's, it's not funny. And I guess soap actors get it really bad because people, oh, I, those yeah. fans are very passionate. And they've been probably and... watching them for like 20 years. <laughs> yes. yes. Uh, and so it's, uh, and the internet's made it weird because now everyone has an anonymous platform to just blast scathing yep. opinions. Yeah, we... you. <laughs> I, I, yeah, so I've, I've been pretty fortunate, but yeah, I've had some of those on the street where it's like, hey, we both know that's pretend, right? Right. <laughs> the, the inability for people to separate reality from right. what's on their screen is a little alarming sometimes, but. Yeah. They're like, you know, Lipstick Jungle is not a documentary, right, ma'am? <laughs> we're just, we're playing make-believe. You got that, right? Okay. And, and I bet the Blind Date Book Club isn't a documentary. Either you're not. Here's the good thing that there's, there's nothing in Blind Date Book Club that that would upset people. You know what I mean? I feel like this one's a much safer. I it would be you'd be hard pressed to find someone to have a real hot take that they would want to express to me on the street over this one. Graham's pretty lovable, even in his misadventure, even with his white lies. <laughs> yes, yeah. It's because you know what? It's all very tame compared to someone destroying a happy marriage. You know. <laughs> Right. All right. We'll, we'll take Graham and his white lie. <laughs> yeah, they're fun. They're playful. It leads to a great miscommunication, which leads to banter. And everyone likes to watch banter. Everybody likes and we banter. love banter. So yeah. bring us some good banter. Yes. Let's be honest. And no one wants to watch a love story where it all works out the whole time. It's that's boring. That's called a short film or a Hallmark card. You know what I mean? Like, right. it's, it needs to, <laughs> like, the hero's got to get stuck in a tree. There's got to be some confusion. There's got to be some tension. And in this case, it's, uh, it's a little, uh, a few white lies that get us there. Yeah. You got to have those, like, boiling points where it's just right. like, ugh, right? Say, when you yeah. want to yell at the screen and go, say what you want to say, right? Right. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, no, you gotta love that. We love good banter, and right if it's just like all perfect, then it's boring too. Yeah, yeah. So, do you um, did you have a favorite scene to film that we can watch for? Ooh, a favorite. So there's a scene. Um, we go out to dinner one night. It's the our our first. Yeah, it's our first sort of outing just the two of us and two reasons why this scene was, was, was special. First of all, it started snowing as we were shooting it. So it wasn't supposed to snow. And here's the thing that's funny is it, it was it had snowed just a ridiculous amount over like a 20 hour period. And we, and we didn't think it was going to be this bad. So all of a sudden though, this causes a problem because when you've shot other stuff where there's no snow on the right. ground, right. now you have to sort of explain why it's not, why it's going to be there in some cases. Not So as we walk down these stairs and you can visibly tell it's snowing, uh, I think we added a line where I was like, it's, it's like, it's snowing. This is beautiful. And I think she says, yeah, but it doesn't last long here. It, it melts quickly <laughs> sort of to be like hey audience don't don't fact check us on the fact it's like in some scenes and not in others but it was it was just insanely beautiful and i'm i grew up in southern california uh, mm. uh all my life so to me anytime it snows is kind of magical so that was special and then when we got into the restaurant um it's a it was a, just a fun easy scene to shoot that ended with us eating delicious gelato so i mean mm. anytime you get to have a tasty treat while working yeah come on yeah and Usually, gelato. You, you know you hear the opposite that the whatever you're eating on set isn't good that you're because it's been there for so long or the prop food <laughs> so, yeah yeah and i know better i know how long scenes can go so i know not to take a big bite or multiple mm -hmm. bites but rarely do I actually have the self-control to do it, especially if the food looks good. And in this case, it was delicious local gelato. Yeah. Uh, so I, I went in on it. I think in the scene, you see me take three separate bites. So that's three bites, every take, three different size shot. I mean, it was a lot of gelato. 
I yeah. ended the day more gelato than man. <laughs> you know, this is a good day at work. Really, honestly, come on. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Here, here, here. Yeah. yeah. The gelato. Well, if you need some snow, I got some. We got a lot here, so. <laughs> Where are the two of you uh, located? Well, Julie's in Minnesota where it never stops snowing. No, we never had any <laughs> snow all year until Sunday. Yeah. And now we got we got a blizzard. So right. And I'm in uh, Rhode Island. Oh, nice. Okay. So there's Rhode Island just seems like a place that, that would be so quaint. There's definitely quaint spots, yeah. I think Hallmark specifically, but all of the film industry has really done Rhode Island a solid. Because anytime it's Nantucket or Rhode Island, it's usually highly idyllic. Yeah. Wouldn't well, you say, I feel Julie? Like they, it's rare. Like, the only nice places to film. <laughs> <laughs> but it's everything in Rhode Island is it's it's quaint. There's someone riding a bike with the basket in front with some local produce. It's, it's more like somebody's bake. walking by flipping you off. <laughs> really? really no, we're scary. not known for being nice. New Englanders are not known for being. Welcome to Minnesota. Like, lovely, yeah. Well, sure, New England. Okay, yeah. All right, fair enough. So I'll go to Minnesota first. That's what I'm hearing here. <laughs> You'll probably have to stop. You're on your way across the country, anyways. <laughs> Delta Hub. I can't wait for the uh, Rhode Island Chamber of Commerce to just light you up in the. You're going to get it. I mean, people feel that all the time. Like, <laughs> No, no. New England, um, the beaches are beautiful. Newport is beautiful. Martha's Vineyard is, is Massachusetts. But um, beautiful. There's beautiful spots for sure. But I wouldn't. Yeah. I, the movies are prettier. <laughs> if you've ever seen Outside Providence, then that's a little bit more accurate, I think. No. Um, uh Oh my gosh, what is it? Dumb and Dumber. They drive through Rhode Island. That that says. Okay. Real hey. footage. Okay. Yeah. Where are you? <laughs> Listeners, if there's if there's anything you take away from this podcast, it's Blind Date Book Club, April 6th, and Rhode Don't Island me. is an absolute uh, <laughs> <laughs> it is for, the, for, the, for the listening audience, I mouthed not so great. For the they're, viewing audience, uh, you know what I really said. They're um you know, it's a, it's a, it, they've got an East Coast vibe. Let's just say they that. Do. Yeah. They have, they have an East Coast vibe. Where are you? Oh, so you grew what? up in California? Is that what? New England yeah. Patriots fans are known for being so tolerant and kind and cool. <laughs> and Red Sox. Yeah. Right. We do have the best fandoms, but that's about it. No, I'm kidding. Um, I love <laughs> it. I'm still here. I've lived here my whole life. <laughs> I just love that you, the East Coast hole you have dug yourself into is just getting deeper and deeper. She loves it. I though. can't wait for the like next time. That hole. They're like they're willing. I do. To... I, I love the the potholes. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we're known for. Um, yeah. No, we. You know what? People are starting to come film here more and more. We just had Good Burger Two films <laughs> uh, last summer. Yeah, Hocus mm -hmm. Pocus. They filmed here. You mean number two? Number two. Yeah. Hocus Pocus too. Okay. We get sequels. Yeah. You get okay. Well, there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, Hocus Pocus one was great, so hopefully, I mean, let's be honest. But the sequel we're all dying for is Good Burger too. So let's just hope that lives <laughs> I mean, up to the yeah. original. Right here in Rhode Island. <laughs> that's what we're all. That's what we're all here. All here for. <laughs> oh my gosh. Um. Hey, I got a question about the movie. Is there an Easter egg we could look for in the movie when we're watching? Like. Something to look for, a scene, a spot? That's a great question because I love a good Easter egg. Yeah, us too. Uh, off the top of my head, I can't think of one. Okay. But, you know, now that we've had this moment, I think going forward, I will probably try to hide an Easter egg in all of the movies I'm in just so that I have a better response to that question because it's a great question. Christmas House, I, was, I hid stuff all over. Um, oh, like you hid actual things. Actual things. Yeah, well, from from things like my actual high school, I had the the, the high school letters on a shirt I was wearing in one scene. Nice. Because um, even though we fictionalized so much stuff, yeah, there was so there was winks to anyone who I actually grew up with, like would oh, watch it and go, that. That, "That was a high school," <laughs> or "That that's that," or "That's you know that's yeah. this." But um, 
or on TV shows, I used to do that. Like I, I in Lipstick Jungle, for example, I had a chalkboard in, in my apartment, my character's apartment. And so I would just sort of sneak over right before we'd start rolling and just like jot something like, like a buddy's business name I put in the back of one of the scenes. So if you're looking closely at the chalkboard, you're like, oh, hey, look at that, you know. Oh, that's, that's super fun. fun. That's yeah. that's really fun. We even just like Easter eggs, like look for the this book or look for in the scenes or something like that. Like sometimes people will be like, watch for the scene. That's the lot happens in there. Mm. We'll just hang out and make up our own Easter eggs after we uh, we watch it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You watch close enough and you come back to me and tell me what you find. Okay, we'll tell you what we find. We'll find secret, the secret our Easter egg. egg is make up our own Easter eggs. Exactly. We're good at making <laughs> stuff up at egg. all. So um, we can make that happen. Okay, so what do you think about Blind Date Book Club makes this movie special or stand out from the other movie of the weeks that we'll be watching this spring or that you've been in? Great question. One thing that I, I really liked about it from the jump was that I think with a lot of movies uh, of the week, there is, and maybe this is not so much recent, but especially like previously, like let's say starting two years ago or three years ago and back, it felt like every love story had to culminate with like, you are my soulmate and I love you. And this has been what I've been wanting all my life. And sometimes that's perfect and it's appropriate and it's it's earned but sometimes it's just a big leap to get to in 90 minutes so what i liked about this one was that it stayed it stayed very kind of realistic it ends with basically like we go on i don't want to spoil it but basically it doesn't end with you are the light of my life that i've been it kind of it ends more real with Again, I don't want to give it away, but like where they find themselves, I think is a is a very realistic portrayal of two people who are like, "Hey, this is nice, right? Okay, right. maybe you know what I mean." Um, uh, so that that was one thing I liked about it was that because sometimes when you when you when you read a script and you have to end with that the romance at a ten, it's tough because in everything you're doing, you're like, "How do we somehow get to there?" And it, you know, and so it, you, it can kind of create artificial stakes and moments that don't need to be as big or suddenly huge reveals. And so what was nice about this one is it, it kind of allowed it to stay a bit more grounded. Right. Of just like, yeah. this is cool. Hey, this is fun. Okay, that was weird. And then sort of figuring out along the way as opposed to everything is, oh my goodness, whoa, you know. Right. Yeah, there's there's nothing worse than watching a story and then you're like, well, that doesn't feel earned. Like <laughs> she left her whole job and state to move for this guy that she does. You know, it, it, I, I, yes. I like what you're saying. Yeah, yeah, especially when like if you're rooting for a character, right? And then all of a sudden, the guy who's like kind of been aloof and they've gone on one date and she's like, you're everything, and you're like, what? What? Respect yourself. No, he's not. He's sort of iffy and you've been on one date. He'd be lucky to go on a second date with you. Like switch. No. Right. <laughs> exactly. But the way you tell it, it feels like that could be revisited, that there would be more story to tell. Oh, a hundred percent. That again, it was nice is it's ending is, is kind of an introduction mm -hmm. to a story that is, you know what I mean? If, if it were a book, <laughs> see what we did there if it were a book this could be the end of the first chapter you know is it his book <laughs> is it his well i will never tell <laughs> is Don't it his secret watch. little book that is got the wrong name on it and is full of white lies <laughs> there's white lies to get the little book there right blind Fine. date book club two graham's little book of white lies there you go, Julie. <laughs> writing credit by you now let's start rolling it out <laughs> We'll, we'll message Peter, see if he's game to direct again. <laughs> oh, yeah. We got to bring got to bring Peter back on board. Right, legend. right, right. As long as you don't shoot when Aaron's shooting when calls a heart, which is like half the year. <laughs> I know. Right, right. Um, yeah. So, um, so when you are making movies of the week like this, you've done a lot of series work in the past, too. What do you like about shooting a movie of the week? Uh, it's a, it's, it's a sprint. 
a proper TV series is going to take you anywhere. Say something, uh, Chesapeake Shores, we shot a season in just under three months, which is wildly fast. Yeah. I've been on other shows where it shoots nine months out of the year. Mm -hmm. And that is, that is truly, that's a distance run. That's a marathon. And you have to pace yourself different for that. I, by my nature, I'm a sprinter. Okay. Like I did well in school because I can put my head down and cram really hard for four days, uh -huh. crush a test, forget it all, right. and then do it all over again. Um, I excelled in that, right? And and life isn't that. Life is a marathon, you know. So I'm constantly trying to adjust. But what I like about the schedule on these is, it's three weeks. It's three weeks of summer camp where you're just right. you're there every day. Well, especially in these, if you're one of the leads, you are in basically every single scene, every single day, and uh, so it's. It's you just go, 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 you know, and it flies by, but it's also nice because it, because it's so short, it's like, like, let's burn out, like, let's work hard, let's leave it all on the table, you know, and, and also what's nice about these is I've found um, them to be quite collaborative. Uh, you can typically, sometimes you can work on a show or a movie where it's the word is sacred, the, the words are sacred, mm -hmm. don't change it, hit every word as is. Whereas on these, uh, it's been my experience, all the time basically where it's if i if i go to the director the producers and i say hey i think there's a way to say this in half the words and still get the same thing across they're like great what do you got and as soon as you allow an actor to do that well now i'm invested because right. now i now i'm a collaborator with you which means i'm not just showing up to say the words i'm going to look at it and go okay there's actually an opportunity for a beat here or for a, a funny laugh here there's actually an opportunity for us to have a sweet moment here if we say that, you know what I mean? And right. then all of a sudden it's, 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 it's putting a puzzle together and everyone's invested, which was a lot of what happened on this one. Part of why it was fun was, you know, it was a lot of Peter and Aaron and I kind of getting our heads together and going, great. Is, is there anything here not on the page? How can we make it better? How right. can we say it in fewer words? You know, so you're, you can kind of get into the scene as late as possible, get out as early as possible and just get to it, you know? Yeah. Love that. Love that. Yeah. Yeah. And we hear that a lot too, that it's, it's kind of like a summer camp because you're together with all the same people for, you know, those 15 days or whatever, and everybody kind of bonds and you get to know each other and how each other work. And then you go home. <laughs> and it, it kind of epitomizes how weird this business is because yeah. you're away from your family and you spend 15 hours a day with these people five days a week. So you do become fast friends. Yeah. And then it's like, Great, you're never gonna see each other again. <laughs> it's just so it's like this weird emotional whiplash, yeah. you know, of like we're best friends forever. And then you're like, oh, we're probably never gonna see each other again. You know, unless we cross maybe. paths in the Hallmark world. See you on maybe, Instagram. Maybe, maybe. <laughs> yeah. Maybe. Not that you can't keep in touch. It's just right. it's so strange right. the work mm -hmm. we do uh, right. sometimes right. like that. The other thing I like about these these movies um is I'm a big fan of Christmas. So uh, when I get to do a Christmas, uh, one of these movies, I sort of, it feels like I'm getting a bonus Christmas. Yeah. Like I have my traditional Christmas at home with my family yeah. and then I get to fly away and get to have three weeks of bonus extra Christmas. Uh, so that is a, a really nice perk. Now you, um, you helped to write the Christmas house movies, right? Yes, that those were based on. Uh, I, I brought that idea to Hallmark because it was actually based on a childhood tradition of mine. And then I worked with uh, the writer Aaron to break the story, and then she actually went off to actually write the script. So I, okay. that was part of the, mm -hmm. the, the pitch was was me, and then the outline yeah. was was she and I, and then the script was was Aaron. Will you do more of those, or more Christmas movies yes. in general? Yeah, a hundred percent. Yes, is the answer to that in any way, especially specifically christmas house if there is any way for for more of that to happen i'm on board that is an incredibly special group like that one just worked with with everybody you know and unfortunately treat williams passed so he wouldn't um he wouldn't be there he'd be there with us in spirit but to get to have that group back together again i would jump at that opportunity yeah and yeah as far as me de group. developing more stuff for myself a hundred percent if if Hallmark is going to give me the opportunity to bring them stories and make movies together, I will continue to do so. I happily, feel like you should visit in Rhode Island. 
<laughs> I've actually, I've heard Rhode Island's pretty rough place to be. People are quite rude, so I'm probably going to do it in Minnesota. <laughs> the Minnesota, <laughs> the Minnesota nice, the Minnesota nice weekend. Yeah, the Minnesota nice. <laughs> right, right. Uh, yeah, flying to the airport. That's the only place Sarah's been in Minnesota in the airport. I made her go stand by the Prince shop. <laughs> Perfect. Only Nothing else to see. Go home. Yeah. <laughs> we were on our way to see Peter Benson. <laughs> True. Oh, nice. Yeah, we that were on our way to Vancouver. So, um, you know, she's got to fly all the way across the country. So, that's yeah, that was a long day. <laughs> but okay, it was so fun. Never worked with Aaron or Peter before this movie? Nope. First for both. So, yep. And, but it was funny. So, my, my good buddy, Brendan Penny, had mm. just worked. Yeah. He'd done a movie called I think The Wedding Cottage with Aaron yeah. Yeah. last year. And he had just wrapped a film with Peter. So I hit him up to say, hey, I knew he and Aaron had a wonderful time. Um he had told me so. And then I reached out to say, hey, how how's this how's this guy Peter you worked with? And he was like, oh, he's incredible. You you gotta do it. And I guess he told Peter the same thing when Peter was like, yeah, they're they're talking about maybe Rob Buckley, Brendan I guess said, you need to make that happen. You'll be happy you did, you know? And so so Brendan sort of was the matchmaker in a sense in terms of both of us going like, okay, great, we'll be good. I love that. That, that yeah. seems like a movie in itself. Like yeah. you're the matchmaker to make movies happen. Can we write that? Like, let's make that happen. That's what people want. They want to see a movie about producing. 90 <laughs> minutes of that, right? You know, Actually, they probably about like... what people want to see. Uh, <laughs> it reminds me of that movie. Did you ever see America's, was it called America's Sweethearts with John Cusack and yes. Um, yes. Julia Roberts? Right, yep. Yeah. Yes. Yep. No, there's, right. you know. Hey, hey, Tyler Hines' movie was just about a show within a movie. So, you know, uh, we we can make this happen. Chris, Christmas House was a, it was about a show. Yeah. Where, or my actor, my, my character was an actor who had a show that played yeah. through both. See, see we, it's we, fun. We make this happen. But it's, it's, it's yeah. do you find it fun to work with somebody new, like to get to know some new people? Yes, it's always it's always it, kind of an exciting gamble, where because uh, you don't know what the person's like. And, right. Listen, the Aaron one was easy because Brendan was like, "You guys are gonna get along great," so that that was fine. But when I when I don't know anyone, when I don't know anything about the person, it is it's sort of that fun first day of school thing where you're like i hope they're cool i hope right. they are i hope they're on board with my brand of weird mm -hmm. you know um because it is 15 hours a day all day right. together so if you got like i'm i'm very easy going so i don't think there'd be a situation where it wouldn't go well but uh but to have someone who shares your brand of silly and likes to be goofy just makes the whole thing that much better right Right, right. Well, right. that's the first thing I thought of when I we were scrolling like social media. I was like, they. I feel like you both have the same sense of humor from what we can see online of you both. So, I imagine there was a lot of laughing. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Completely. Hey, um, would you play a little game with us as we wrap up? I'd love to. Okay. Yeah. Favorites game, Julie. Do you want to kick it off? Yeah. So there is. It's the favorites. It's not really a game. You can give more than one answer. Um, Welcome to our unbuttoned conversations. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm going to give you the caveat right now because I had the hardest time with favorite questions. I'm going to say I'm going to answer these questions that they are my favorites today. I'm not married to these answers. They may change oh. tomorrow, but the, I will give you my today favorites. We, anytime we, someone's like, what's your favorite food? I panic because there are so many answers and I don't know what no, to do. This say. is perfect. And you can give more than one. That's why we are like suspenders and button. You can just have unbuttoned conversations. You can say whatever you want. So... So there's our okay. back. Feel comfortable with your answer. Um, uh, uh, if you uh, had to pick a rom-com, what would you say is your favorite? Oh, Just Friends. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So good. We yeah. get the best. It's like I've always got a list of things that I watch or you're like, oh, no, that's really good. Yep, yep. So this is how we learn new things to watch too. Yeah, I that's think a good I one. Just rewatch that um, over the Christmas. Um, what about a TV show? Is there something you're binging or something you really always have loved? Well, 
Patriot on Amazon. Oh. I shout this one from the rooftops because not everyone knows of it. And there's only two seasons of it, but it is a master class and just in every department. It's so good. It's funny. It's dark. The acting is great. The writing is great. The directing is great. Uh, so I would say that that's a great show. And then listen, as far as the bingeables, Office, Parks, Rec, 30, Rock, mm-hmm. Arrested, Development, you yeah. know, those are all staples. All the right. comedies. Yeah. Always, always, always. Okay, then let's ask, uh, what's your favorite food? <laughs> Corn dogs, tater tots, pizza, sushi, burritos, churros, tacos. Oh, yeah, these are That's all crazy good. Messy. <laughs> to eat. Right. Yep. Do you have a specific corn dog, like just the frozen food one, or do you have like a corn dog some specific place? Actually, you know what's funny? I've been to the Mall of America, and I I'm had, sp- <laughs> and I had a, I had an amazing corn dog there. So yeah, I will say that or- your mall knows what they're doing when it comes to corn dogs. Yeah, that mall is big. Um, <laughs> it's got an amusement park in the middle. Um, yeah, but you didn't miss the best thing. It's not a corn dog. It's a pronto pup, and it's at the Minnesota State Fair. That's what you got to get. What's that? It's yeah. uh it's essentially a corn dog, but instead of being dipped in cornmeal batter, it's dipped in what's essentially like a pancake batter and goes through the wheel wonder and comes out on the other end and it's uh pronto pup. Look it up. It is that is oh so kind so of like a, a fried pig in a blanket? Um a little bit. It's uh you know, not so sweet. It's not quite that sweet. Um, uh, but that's the background Listen, on it. I'm in. It's, it's iconic. You, you and anything it's to put on a stick, I'm in. My my son can't even walk through the state fair until he's or till he's had one so he can think. He's like, I can't think about anything else until I've eaten one of those, right? So you gotta sure. get that right out of the way. Um, what about uh favorite drink? What do you like to drink when you're eating corn dogs? <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> Listen, it's gonna be a good old fashioned pop. <sighs> right? Let's go with the pop. I love, I love a carbonated directly. beverage, yeah. Yeah, listen. If yeah, if we're especially if we're doing corn dogs, we're not respecting our bodies. Let's have some soda. Right, <laughs> right, Open right. Up um, yeah. And then let's finish up with one so we can get you moving in a timely manner. Uh, favorite band or singer? Oh boy, favorite Sia. Oh yeah, Sia's putting out some fantastic music. These she's so talented. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. and the voice is. So good. So good. Yeah. Love go. that. Well, tell us, tell everybody where to um, find you on social media. On Instagram, I'm at Robert Earl Buckley. On Twitter, I'm at Robert Buckley. Although, let's be honest, I'm never on Twitter anymore. I have stopped opening that dumpster fire. Um, <laughs> so Instagram. It's Instagram a very is accurate the way to go. description. Seriously, I only open if I'm like, you know what? I want to bum myself. I want to get pissed off real quick or be depressed. I'll open to it. Like, truly, I will look at the symbol and be like, no, I like myself today. I'm good. Well, you live tweeted Erin Offen. Erin Offen live tweets her her projects. Will you live tweet? No. No. <laughs> if, listen, if, if Hallmark asks and it's a thing, maybe, but honestly, I'm just, I'm so over Twitter. I yeah. just have no interest. Uh, in, uh, Instagram is where I like to go if I actually have something. Even social media in general, I feel like I just have a bit of fatigue with it and I have to put yeah. more effort into it, whereas like it used to be so much easier. Uh, and so once that happened, I was like, yeah, I'm, I'm, and then Twitter truly became a dumpster fire. And I was like, yeah. I'm good. I'm yeah. good, actually. I'll just do Instagram. We yeah. tend to prefer yeah. Instagram also. <laughs> it's, it's our preferred environment for sure. For sure. Great. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so Blind Date Book Club is comes out on April 6th on Hallmark Channel. So we're excited to watch you and Aaron and, of course, uh, Faith, who we got to talk with yesterday. Um, and thank you for joining us today. Oh, my goodness. Thank you for having me. And don't forget to look for that incredible Easter egg moment. <laughs> Julie. We'll, we'll, okay. we'll come up with it and we'll post what it was. We'll, we'll, and then we post it on like Twitter because you know I'm refreshing my feed. I, we can yes, make post up on Twitter. things out of nothing at all where we'll, we'll post. We'll take you. Yeah, yeah. Sure. I'll co-sign whatever you come up with. It'll be great. Okay, perfect. <laughs> we'll hang out one second and we'll um, end the recording. Thank you everybody for listening and watching.